Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. Was there a time that he did not show up when he said he was going to? Yeah, there was. He's on a train. Are you ready to confront him? Oh, yeah. Marcus. Marcus. We've been together for three years. Does three Marcus years. understand my new religion? Does your path to enlightenment include a stop off at deception? From Cheaters surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Just like he's just trying to keep a big secret from me. I just can't go on anymore. I need to know the truth. I don't like being the one that has to show you this. Oh. I asked her about him, and she said nothing's going on. Do you want to confront him? Oh, yeah. Take me there. Yeah, I got him. Hey, go. Go. Get up, get up. Get up. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Hello, I'm Joey Greco. Welcome to another episode of Cheaters. Meet Michelle Moss, a hardworking young woman who fears her boyfriend of three years may be searching for a new girlfriend to complement his changing beliefs. Michelle brings her suspicions to Cheaters to learn the truth once and for all. Michelle Moss, age 20, a dedicated young saleswoman who suspects her boyfriend isn't telling her all the facts. When me and Marcus met, I was walking down the street one day, just coming back from the store on a little jog, and he was rolling by with one of his friends, he said hi, and then he's pulled over, and it was at like a city garage. He pulled over and asked me for my number and everything. On special occasions, of course, we'd go all out. We'd either go out to eat or something, or I'd always get presents from him, you know, and he'd send these little teddy bears to work every now and then, just a little thing we had between each other. Marcus has been studying Buddhism for about six months now. At the beginning, it seemed like he was paying a lot of attention towards that and kind of ignoring me, but Sometimes I would come and try and spend time with them, you know, and but it just seems like he wasn't giving me the same attention as he was giving me in the beginning of the relationship. It seems like everything he tells me, it's an excuse. I mean, he uses work for excuse. He uses, like, parent, going to see his parents for excuse. He's been asking to borrow money from me, and if he's working all these extra hours, where's all his money going? I recently gave him money for a car payment, and he still hasn't paid that back to me yet. If he is cheating on me, he's playing with my heart, and I mean, I would, it just hurts me so bad, you know. You don't play with people's emotions like that in a relationship, especially after three years. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Marcus Carr, age 23. A recently converted Buddhist who may be taking the wrong path to romantic enlightenment. Investigation day one. Cheaters begins the investigation in pursuit of Marcus as he heads toward a local rail station. Suspect Carr waits patiently by the curb where an unknown female companion meets him. It's possible that Marcus may be doing a friendly favor, but that theory is quickly disproved. The two share a luscious after-work kiss, apparently happy to see each other after a long workday apart. Cheaters detectives follow close behind as the couple arrives at an unknown residence. They share a casual embrace, as if this isn't the first time they've seen each other off. After another obligatory goodbye kiss, the two part ways. Investigation day four. Once again, he arrives at a local rail station and picks up his female companion. As soon as she hops into the car, she eagerly grants Marcus a romantic boon for faithfully picking her up. They arrive at a local fountain park, ready to spend some quality time in each other's company. 
The happy Buddha and his female consort leave the vehicle and head toward a serene and peaceful fountain. They're kind of playful at first, and then the two lovingly embrace as Marcus contemplates his inner bliss. Investigation day six. Marcus arrives early at the local rail station to pick up his secret companion. He quickly runs into the station to greet her. And sometime later, detectives observe the couple leaving the station and heading toward the young woman's apartment. Marcus seems quite ready to move forward with a new lifestyle. But in a phone conversation, Marcus still clings to the worldly comforts that Michelle's devotion affords him. Hello? Hey there, what you doing? Working, kind of busy. You know, I was just thinking I let you borrow a couple dollars last week for uh, your car payment, and I never got it back. I was thinking maybe you could take me out to the mall or something, stop by Victoria's Secret, go a little shopping, you know? Mm, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Why don't you... Give me a call back when I get off. I'm kind of busy right now. I'll call you back, okay? All right. Okay? Uh-huh. Love you. Love you too, man. Bye. Bye. Cheaters realizes that Marcus's pattern of behavior is no longer worthy of complainant Moss's trust and decides to bring Michelle evidence in the hope that she can finally bring closure to this stressful and ungracious relationship. Coming up, the confrontation. With evidence that Marcus has changed his affections, Cheaters brings Michelle the disheartening news. Michelle stands firm and tempers her desire for a resolution with an open mind. Michelle, thanks for meeting us here tonight. Our investigators have information that they want you to see. Are you ready to take a look at that now? Yes. Early in the investigation, your boyfriend Marcus, he arrived at a local station a female was observed getting into his car. He greeted her with a kiss. He brings this woman to a residence, another kiss before she gets out of the car. I wouldn't expect that to be acceptable, especially for someone that's in a committed relationship with someone else for three years. The detectives continued their investigation, and he was followed, same train station, approximately the same time, same woman gets in. It seems to be very sweet on the outside. Our team followed them to a local fountain park. They're embracing one another. All the while, he's leading you to believe that he's working late. After a nice afternoon at the park, he brings her back to her place. Another small kiss. I don't understand why he's doing it. I mean, I thought it was going pretty good, and from what he was telling me, it was going pretty good to him, too. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't understand. This is a pattern that he's been doing and continuing with consistently. This time, he gets there early. In expectation, he goes in, picks her up, greets her as her train arrives at the station. They head straight to her place at that point, and he remained inside with this woman for the rest of the night. Was there a time that he did not show up when he said he was going to? Yeah, there was. We know where he is. He's on a train, and that's why we're at the train station. What we're gonna do, Michelle, is get on the train. There's no place for him to go. Right. Are you ready to confront him? Oh, yeah. Is it on way? Okay, let's go there now. So I just don't wanna keep, but I don't want them to be able to see you. Okay, remember, first car. Greco with cheaters. Is this what Can you, you call explain? working off? Does your path to enlightenment include a stop off at this deception? You know nothing about my path to enlightenment, okay? We've been together for three years. Three Just want to understand my new religion. You don't understand it. She understands it. She studies with me. All you want to do is party and hang out. 
I don't do that anymore. You couldn't tell her that? Yeah, you couldn't tell me, so I could have dropped you a long time ago. What kind of is that? I was going to tell you soon. I was this trying to think the right somewhere. way to do it. That's all. I was trying to think you the right way to do it. You could have been straight up with it. So your heightened sense of spirituality doesn't include honesty? Yes, it does. I was it does. Be but just in you a timely going fashion. You were to be honest when? When I totally committed oh, myself to you? Let me off. I don't care. Let me off. Let me off the train. Now. Let me off the train. Go. Marcus, you have gone out like for three years. No, three Marcus, years. she had because you weren't man enough to tell her the truth. That's what that's what the truth is. Are you just gonna hey, Marcus, keep walking away? Are we gonna sell this now? Come Marcus, on. here's your chance. Here's your chance to tell us your story. Y'all need to get the cameras away from me now, please. You wouldn't have any cameras on be truthful for once. Come on, is that you're just gonna run? The path, that's not the path. How about facing up to your behavior and your responsibility? Get the camera out of my face. Explain how your behavior is truthful. Why you just gotta keep walking away? You gonna spend more of the money that she's been loaning you? Is that what it is? Get these cameras out of my face now. Marcus, look. The cameras are not right. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a big conflict and confrontation. Right, Let's try and problem like solve. Nobody wants to talk. Oh, we can take this in the bathroom, believe this. Because I sure will go up. Come on, Marcus. You can't hide in there forever. Coming up, the conclusion. Come on, Marcus. You can't hide in there forever. You don't have no right to be lying about it. I'm sorry, but I was going to tell you, not in front of the camera crew. I'm not saying another word. I'm sorry? I said I'm not saying another word. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Marcus, this isn't the way to do things. Look, Marcus, Marcus. What? A conversation. Get that camera out of my face now. Marcus. There's no place for you to go. We're gonna stay here until you decide to stop and just have a conversation with Michelle. Sorry, I did not want to do it this way. I will talk to you later. Not now, please. Can Why you... can't you talk to me now? What, 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 what can I tell you now? You've already called me, you already know. What pleasure were you getting out of being dishonest? I you wasn't were carrying getting on... pleasure out of being dishonest. What you were continuing with that behavior. You were carrying on with one woman and, and, and showing yourself and portraying yourself as one way. And then you were doing the same thing with her. I had to get the time to find out, to see you. Around behind my no, back? No, it's not about that. It's just about my religion, I'm telling you. She understands, she knows what's going on inside of me, and you don't. It's right. that simple. Yeah. OK? What was going on inside of you? Yeah, I'm going, look, I was look, going through a lot Marcus, of change. I understand okay? you're frustrated, because this is facing what you're, you've been responsible <laughs> for. Marcus. You know what, Marcus? Huh? Okay, run. Relationships aren't easy, but that, that certainly doesn't make him any easier. And I don't understand why you gotta be childish about it and run. <laughs> you know, I already seen you, you might as well stop and Mm -hmm. Tell me what's going on. I mean, well, evidently, enlightenment and enrichment and spiritual path includes hypocritical behavior. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, I think we're pretty much done here tonight. 
so we'll get you back. After the confrontation, Michelle states she needs some time to sort through the fragments of her former relationship. At the end of the show, Cheaters update you on Michelle's life. But now, Cheaters talks with Andrea Pleasant, a former client wanting to give an update on the changes in her life since the confrontation. Andrea offers a few choice words for the man who took for granted her love and dedication. Andrea Pleasant, age 28. Andrea stops by Cheaters to give viewers an update on her boyfriend's status since her confrontation. Well, when I seen Lynn in my house, the first thing came to my mind was low down, dirty, bitch. In my house, I know she had some kind of clues that, you know, it was pictures and pictures of me and Jermaine, so it wasn't like she didn't know. What the hell is going on here? Huh? Hey, who, who I'm Joey Draco with Cheaters. Who is you? That's huh? me. I knew this was going to happen. I knew Why in the hell, why the hell, the hell are you doing this, this to me? You, man, I don't do this type of I'm working 12 hours a day. Why is you doing this? Why did I burn Jermaine's stuff was because I was angry. And that's the only thing I can think of to get up on his skin. This is the woman that you said you love. Reason, Your hypocrisies are not I victimless, Jermaine. Come on, baby. Burn for mama. Tell you. Oh. Yeah, oh. Yo on fire, mister. Tell you. Tell you. I won't. No. No. Dead. Hell no. Don't put that. Burn. Burn. Jermaine hold me back up on a lot of things, like my job. Um, maybe I could have been and got my promotion. The things that I was doing at work, trying to work, you know, around Jermaine. And I lost a lot of my friends trying to, you know, keep Jermaine at the same time. So something had to give. Get the car, let's go, man. Tell you. Yo. Andrea, Andrea. Oh, Lord. Jermaine was in jail. Um, I took a couple phone calls from him because I felt sorry for him, but as time go by, I grew out of it. And um, me and Jermaine, we, we'll just be friends. I really don't have any contact with him, but besides talking on the phone. Yeah. You're going to be all right. This was four years. What did I do wrong? Don't turn this into what you did wrong. You were committed. I don't know if setting his clothes on fire was the answer. I don't have to worry about him coming back. It was a relief. It really was. OK. Just promise me that that's the only thing you're going to set on fire. OK? Jermaine, when you lay down with dogs, you catch fleas. So keep doing what you're doing. And uh, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. After the disappointing confrontation, Michelle says she needs some time to sort out her former relationship. She expresses disappointment in Marcus, but hopes he can find whatever religious support and experience he needs to become a better person. She understands that committed relationships involve complete trust and is sorry that hers was broken by Mr. Carr. Cheaters hopes that Michelle can now move on and find the kind of healthy, committed relationship that she deserves. Marcus Carr still maintains that his faith is strong and that his path to enlightenment will continue unperturbed. He's sorry to have caused Michelle so much pain and regrets lying to her, but states that for the sake of his religion and his sanity, it's better that he move on. Mr. Carr's embarrassed companion wants nothing further to do with the show or Mr. Carr. She declined all requests for an interview and refused to sign a release for the use of her likeness. Cheaters offers her the most sincere condolences. <laughs>